Okay, so today we are going to start a tutorial on panel data models in R Studio. So first of all, we will start with the basic models of panel data. For that, the libraries are required is PLM, panel linear model, tidyverse, read R, G plots, and foreign. So I will load these libraries. So it has you will not recognize the plm so what i have to do is so i will install this plm when it is stopped so let us let it load and then after that i will install the plm and it's also saying no don't recognize gplots so i will go in install packages let it load here i will write plm and install so it will install in the background of the R studio in the edit library in the R studio so this way it will be installed it will install all the background uh, relevant dependent libraries that is required for this plm so it is uh, successfully loaded so it will stop uh, yes so this arrow shows it is installed so then I can just load it. So highlight it and control enter is loaded. Now I need to install the GGG plots. So for that I will go in install and I will say G plots. So I will press enter. So it will install. So you can see all the background libraries are being successfully unpacked and installed. So it's complete. So when you see arrow here, bottom, you can see it's complete. So I can just load this library now. So it is used to make a graph uh, that is required in the panel data. So it's installed. Then I will read the data file. It's in my computer. It's in, in CSV format. So I will use the read CSV command. So when I execute it, So it will read the data file. Let us see the data file. This data file has many variables and many countries. So first variable is, let it load so that I can explain. So first variable is cross section ID. So it's a cross product of country name and a year. So it's a unique identifier for each line. It's sometimes used, but not used in our example. So it's a country, country names. So it's set in a way that for each country, the years are repeated until all the years are used. So for Angola, I've started from 2008 to 2018, then Albania 2008 to 18. So it's a chunk. So each data for each country is used as a block and it's repeated. So even if uh, one country does not have a data in a particular year, I keep it as an empty so that the blocks are complete so that it, they help in some other type of analysis. Sometimes they help in formatting, uh, forecasting. So I don't keep any row deleted. If there's no data, I make complete blocks. So block means each country have all the years that are available. So if any particular country have fewer years, then make a complete block and keep uh, NAs, as, uh, keep empty rows. So it has a country here dot X, one variable competitiveness index, country code, Country name is repeated, so it's a data file which is rough. And here dot y and the other variables include globalization index, and there are other some some types of globalization index variables. And there is one uh, data of uh, level of a country, so it's uh, based upon the uh, World Bank uh, World Bank classification of countries. So this way, this is a panel data file. So let's go back. Now there's one variable here dot X. I have to rename it to so the command used is in the names dot DF. So each data file have a names. So the names show that uh, this, the, the, what are the variable names? So I need to change the names of this variable to this variable. So, so what I, if I run it, it will really change the name of the variable so that you can use it in a smaller version. Now you need to remember how to take a log of a variable. So the command is mutate 
So all the functions are shown here. So data file equal to data file pipe, mutate qf is log of this variable, qfs is log of this variable, qf is log of this variable. And then I also calculated the square forms. So qf square is log of variable multiple by log of same variable. So this way the log waveforms and the square forms are generated in the data file. Now you can also declare panel data file as a panel data. So how you can do it is the PD, uh, uh, P, PD or you can write it as data file dot panel data is the panel data frame, data file, select country and here as a cross section. This is cross section, this is time and then drop index two. So when I run this, it will make a new data file where it will have an indicator as shown on and the column. Let's see, reload. So this indicator, so it means the uh, R is able to uh, identify the data file. So it has an identifier here. Now it knows that it is a panel data, but uh, you can do with the, you can do some process without it. Now, first of all, uh, when we use a panel data, so because there are many countries, first of all, we need to look at that the, our dependent variable, if the dependent variable has a different country mean. So let's make a graph so that I can show you. So let's run this graph. Let's see how it shows up. So it is showing this. So since there are many countries, so it's giving us an error that it is showing us first 50. So there are too many. So let's make it big. So the thing that we need to pick it up here is that our the dependent variable have same average across countries or not. So you can see it here that the GCA average is not same across the data countries. So it means that uh, we, cannot con we cannot assume that all countries are same in terms of dependent variable. So this problem will lead to a selection of a different model other than OLS because OLS assumes that the, the dependent variable have same mean across all countries. So it is not same, so we cannot select. Similarly, we can also make it in terms of mean across uh, mean across time, because OLS also assumes that it has a mean, same mean across time. So I can just change it to year and write heterogeneity across time. So if I plot this one, so you will see that it has a different mean. So it is increasing in time. So it has, does not have a constant mean, but it looks more constant as compared to the, the cross section averages. Now you can also make graphs. So this is a complicated graph or command for making graphs. I will discuss it uh, one by one. So data file pipe, you will filter for NAs and filter for one categories that you don't need. It's not classified. Uh, and then you make a GG plot where you put X variable is globalization and Y is GCI. Okay, and the color is based upon the level. So there are four levels. So the, and geom point means it will be a scatter plot and theme black and white means it will be shown in a black and white and theme uh, legend will be in the bottom and labels title is there and subtitle is there. So when I make this graph, it is a detailed graph of scatter plot of uh, uh, globalization and competitiveness. Okay, uh, it will take time to load. So when I show it here, so you can see that one of the category which was not classified, it has some outliers. So it is being removed and all the colors are shown. So it is shown that uh, globalization has a positive effect on competitiveness and the high income countries are in the top low middle are middle are uh, upper middle are here uh, lower middle are here and low income are here so this way it's a graph it has a title it has a subtitle all the labels are there so uh, more you give detail the more rich the graph will be other are same they are just changing using some other variable so then you can take some descriptive stats using summary or df so it will give you a descriptive stat of a data file for each variable it will have this the data 
uh, descriptives. So there are other commands that we discussed in uh, OLS to, to have a detailed descriptives, but for minor descriptive, you can use this one. Similarly, if you want to calculate the means country-wise, so, so you will have a new data file means, data file select, you will categorize, filter the group the data by country, and then filter the missing values, then summarize and calculate the mean values. So when I run this, you will have a new data and where you can see the mean value for each country. So this is used for plotting or doing some other processes. So there are 148 countries here. So this is the data for them. Then what you can do is you can estimate OLS model. We already studied this command. OLS is LM, dependent variable, independent variables, and command data file. When you execute it, it will store the OLS results and you will do summary. It will give you the estimates of OLS. So you can see there that there is only one intercept. So OLS assumes that all countries have uh, the average value of GCI is this intercept. So it assumes that all countries have same average. Uh, so intercept is actually conditional average. So all countries have same conditional average and the independent variables are here. So we have already discussed how to interpret a square variable. So you can use that command and there's R square here and F test here. So F test is significant and the R square is also 0.7. So this way you can estimate simple OLS. Then we can estimate the fixed effect model, which is the first model in the panel data. It assumes that all countries have different intercepts. So it will estimate the model and when I ask, request is to show it. So when I open it up, it does not show intercept because all countries have different intercepts. But if you request R, it will give you intercept country wise. So all square variables are here. You know how to interpret it. We have already discussed in previous videos. R square is here. And then the F statistics is also there. So overall model is significant. So this way we estimate a fixed effect model. So fixed effect model is saying that the countries do not have same intercept because they are generically different. So they should have a different intercept. Because we have 147 intercepts, so it will be very big table if you show it here. So it has recorded the intercept in the background. If we want them want it to show, it will show us. So let's see. So there are some diagnostics. We'll, we'll come back it later on. But first of all, we'll do the random effect model. So its command is random effect. And only difference is in this command, you are giving the PLM, dependent variable, independent variables, data file, and indexing here and a country, and then model within. So fixed effect is a within model, and random effect you say random. When you run this one, so it will store it, and when you request it to show, so summary RE. So what will happen, it will give us the results and when you, so it has the intercept value. So the random fact assumes that all countries have different intercept, but they are randomly different. So we can assume that it will have a constant value. So they are randomly different. So you, you assume that they are different, but their difference is random, so you cannot estimate. But in fixed effect, the they, they difference is estimatable. That's why it will estimate. So it has an R square, it has an F test. So all the things are there that you need to interpret. So it is saying that 147 cross sections were used and the time, uh, time period was one to eight. So few countries have minimum one year and some have eight years, so total 1080 observations. And then all the other things are here. So let's minimize it and then go back. So now we need to select uh, let's let which model to be selected. Is it a fixed loop model or a random effect model? For that it is pH test, FE and RE. So it's FE and RE are actually the equation names. So if you they name it differently, we use, use different names. So pH test is here. When I run it, let's run. And it will give me this model. So it's the Hausman test. So if it is significant, you F, so let's write it here so that you can keep a record. So, Hausman test. It compares 
FENRE model. So if it is significant, then FE is better than RE. If it is insignificant, then RE is better than FE. So in our case, it is significant. So we assume that the, the uh, what do you say, the fixed effect is appropriate. Okay, so because the null hypothesis is accept, uh, the alternate hypothesis is accepted and the model alternative, the model one was random effect model. So we say that fixed effect is appropriate. So since fixed effect is appropriate, we will go for the, the other diagnostics that it will give us. So first of all, we can see what are the different results for each country. So it's fixed F, FE. So when you run it, it will take some time and it will give you a table. So it's loading up because there are 148 countries. It will take time to make a table out of it. Here you can see all the intercept values for each country. So this way it, it is reporting. So you can note down that they are different, not equal to each other. So our assumption was true that intercept is not constant. Secondly, we are comparing the, if a fixed effect was better than OLS. Why? Because OLS was assuming that countries are same. Fixed effect is assuming countries are different. So we need to check if uh, our assumption is correct or not. So this assumption, uh, if we run this model, if we run this model, what will happen? It will give us uh, individual effects test. And if it is significant, it means that uh, the assumption that countries are different is true. And the assumption that countries are same is false. So fixed effect is better than OLS. So we will use the fixed effect. Then there is a PLM test. Let's see what it tells us. It will give us, uh, so it is saying that it will not work on, uh, should be even, so here in time. So we need to add time here. So let's run and it will give us, uh, it's a Lindane multiplier test. So it is saying us that if the, the, the time effects are significant, so it means countries uh, have, uh, countries are behaving differently in time or not. So it is insignificant means the, we can assume that countries are not different in time. So, so it's insignificant. So this can be used to check that. Then there is a other test called the uh, cross-section dependence. So cross-section dependence is actually the cross-sectional correlation. Uh, this is a simple word for that is cross-section correlation, which we have studied earlier. So it is, Significant means that model has cross-sectional correlation in it. So we need to solve it later on. And there is a second CD test. This gives also the same thing. It is also significant. It tells us there is a cross-sectional dependence. And cross-sectional dependence is cross-sectional autocorrelation. Then there is simple autocorrelation test, which is time series. So we cannot find this function, PGG test, which was P. BG test. So it is significant means there is a serial autocorrelation. Okay, so these are a few diagnostic tests. So we have checked for heteroscedasticity using this PLM test. So there was no time heteroscedasticity. And we checked for cross section autocorrelation. Then we checked for uh, Broch Pagan. Uh, uh, this is serial correlation test. So this was our tutorial to panel data basic models. So hopefully uh, it will help you to estimate your uh, panel data data files. And, and if you wanted to go to detail models, you can, you can look for advanced libraries. It will help you to uh, understand how to estimate the data.